forward. Okay. And there is that need. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our latest Bird Eye Rules webinar. You can probably, can you hear? We have a new microphone, so hopefully you can hear me. So, um, do you have some sort of a laryngitis issue? So, Heather Muser is going to be doing most of the talking. And then we've also got our Loda Rules grower over here to my right, Jeanette. Hello there. So, um, and then um, in, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, teleconferencing in from Washington State is Sarah Denike. So, we are going to move away from the webcam now and we're going to start our presentation here for you. All right. So in case you missed the four webinars on the management plans, don't worry. All the webinars were recorded and they can also be viewed at lodigrowers.com under the education videos, presentations, and handouts tab. That's also where all webinar handouts are available, including today's handout after we are done. So we're actually going to be creating this handout as we go along during your question and answer session. And we'll also have the recording posted of today's webinar for you in that same area, just like it was done before. Um, and that will be up by the end of today. So thank you very much for your participation. Like always, please let us know what works for you and what doesn't work for you so that we can improve these webinars. And as a reminder, please be sure to read the introductory material in your binder if you haven't done so yet. It's pages one through six. It's a nice overview of the program and it explains a lot about the standards and about who to contact with questions. As you prepare for your audit, make sure that you're using the audit prep checklist which is tab 10 in your binder, and it's also available to download, as is all the other binder documents at lodirules.com. So Heather Muser is your main contact for audit-related questions. Her email address is listed here. And remember that you can also reach out to other Lodi Rules growers for tips and advice. So your hosts today are myself, Dr. Stephanie Bolton, Sustainable Wine Growing Director for the Lodi Rules Program, employed by the Lodi Wine Grape Commission. And then we have a new doctor in the house, Heather Muser. She just recently earned her PhD. Congratulations, Heather. And she's your independent, your true independent, true third party Lodi Rules Auditor. So she does not work for the Lodi Wine Group Commission. She does not work for Protected Harvest or Sure Harvest. She's completely independent. And then we have Sarah Denike. She's a dedicated, very dedicated <laughs> Lodi Rules Coordinator for Stanton Lang. Um, and she has a super wonderfully organized notebook. So Sarah, if you want to say hello, you, your microphone should be working. Yep. <clears throat> Hi, I'm, um, I live up in uh, the Seattle area. So I am remote today. If any of you were on one of the very first webinars, I was actually in town for spring break and got to do it in person with Stephanie that time. All right, great. So um, we're going to read over some basic information from the Protected Harvest Certification Manual, and Heather's going to do most of the talking now. But basically, to give you an overview, we're going to tell you just some basic audit information. We're going to give you some general tips, and then we're, the main part of today is going to be a question and answer session that will be interactive. Okay, so Heather, if you'll start reading over this basic info. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and read through just some basic information um, about your audit. Basically, during the first year of certification, you'll get an actual on-site visit from an auditor. And I do want to interject here that um, while I'm one of the primary contacts, please don't hesitate as well to contact Jeff Fleek, who is the, also an independent auditor contracted with me. Um, and also fully independent for third-party audits. So please don't hesitate to contact Jeff. And um, you'll receive a visit from one of us. Hopefully you've heard from one of us so far. Um, who will spot check the vineyards and selected practices based on the information you provide in your self-assessment. In subsequent years, you'll get an actual on-site visit only once during any three-year period. Um, this year will be selected by the auditor, and you'll be informed only after your application and your payment are received um, by Protected Harvest and 
Um, in the years you do not receive an on-site visit, you'll be asked to provide three to four types of paper or electronic documentation via email or postal mail um, to the auditor. And the auditor will inform you which documents are needed and the specific vineyards that are to be re um, represented unless they're relevant to the whole farm and the date that those things are due. And don't forget, pesticide records will be amongst the items requested, which otherwise known as our P's units. The others that, and other um, required documents are at the discretion of the auditor. We typically ask for three um, scouting reports, three consecutive scouting reports. To uphold the merits of the Lodi rule standards, you will not know in advance of the visit which um, vineyards or practices have been selected for on-site auditing. The person who is responsible for implementing the program on your farm must be present during this visit and for success should be involved in the self-assessment and application process as well. Please, ladies and gentlemen, this is important. If the person who, didn't, who filled out the self-assessment is not present, it really is a painful process for both parties. So please be there. Um, failure to be at the, the agreed upon location at the agreed upon time will result in additional fees. And also if a second visit is required, I've only experienced this once, but if it is required due to a lack of sufficient documentation at the time of the first visit, further fees will be required. So see Appendix A in your binder for the schedule of additional fees. Um, and this also goes for canceling audits, audits within 48 hours in advance. That's really hard for everybody too. To uphold the merits of the Lodi rule standards, you'll know in advance of the visit which vineyards or practices that have been selected for on-site auditing. Um, and additionally, each year, approximately 10% of participating growers will receive a surprise audit visit, otherwise known as our random. And no more than 24 hours notice will be, gives, will be given for this visit by the auditor. We can be a little flexible there, 24 to 48 hours. And these visits are assigned independently of whether the farm received an off or an on-site audit for the year. Um, to maintain the integrity of the program during the auditing process, the auditor must request additional documentation or on-site verification of the initial, if the initial spot reveals discrepancies to the auditor or otherwise indicates that the farm may not be in compliance. And ladies and gentlemen, that is very true. I ask for, Jeff and I ask for additional documentation almost for every standard or most of the standards that we see. So please do not fear that, please. That's simply for the integrity of the program. Um, all auditors must meet a minimum qualification level and disclose that there's no conflict of interest with the applicant. Auditors are required to sign a confidentiality agreement additionally an or annually, which is very true, to protect confidential information disclosed during the evaluation. Every audit we do is confidential no matter what. Um, just a few general tips. Please be prepared and organized, please. <laughs> That really goes well for, for both of us. Um, that auditor is looking for documentation and evidence to support the answers that you provide in the self-assessment. That is it. And Jeff and I are very open to helping in terms of the, question, the answers to the questions. If there's something that might be just slightly off, we will be happy to give you um, a answer instead and kind of say, okay, next year when you fill out the self-assessment, answer it this way instead. So we, we really are there to work with you. Um, there's a number of different organizational strategies that growers use. These vary from a fully digital organizational strategy to only on paper. So please choose the structure that works, works best for you. Um, always have people involved present at the audit. Review the audit prep checklist ahead of time. Keep in mind that it's a living document and it is in its first year. So please email us with additional suggestions to stephanie at lodiwine.com. Also, please, um, if you prefer the paper structure, create a notebook organized by chapter and standard with verification documents. And Sarah, do you want to give insight as to how you do this? Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with my father, Stanton Ling, um, I've been running his um, Lodi Rules uh, program certification for the last 10 years, um, the all 10 that he's been in the program. Um, so our binder is massive. <laughs> um, and we've, and besides the fact that he has a um, whole bunch of um, fields that are in within the program. So if you're one of those growers that only has a couple of fields, it's going to be simple for you to create um, a binder with everything in it. If you're a grower that has 25 fields, you're gonna, it's gonna feel a bit more challenging. Um, but what I have found 
is the best over the years for us when we have we actually have 32 fields within the program um, so I create it um, based on each chapter and because some chapters are general so like chapters one and two um, are farm across the farm so um, they don't need to be specific to each field and then three through six are much more field specific and so I've organized um, those sections with little interior tabs um, that show which field we're talking about so um, the different times that we've been audited um, we've had Heather come out a couple times and we had the previous auditors come out a couple of times um, it, it's easy then for them to be able to flip exactly to the field that they want to look at and be able to just thumb through those documents um, that are specific to that particular field as well as all of the fields as a whole we are probably in the more paper realm of everything, um, mostly because that's where my dad's comfort level resides, and he is the one who's actually on the ground day to day, and I manage the paperwork for him. So I don't know if that that there's a little bit of two cents, and you can always if you have if anybody has questions, get for me specifically um, that are offline after this feel free to get in touch with either Stephanie or Heather and they will point you to this. I've obviously been doing this for a while and I've done it for several growers, not just my dad. Um, so I've seen large scale and small scale um, ways to organize. So Sarah, what's your email address so I can write it here for them? Sure. It's um, Sarah, S-A-R-A-H at D-E-N-I-K-E -D -E -K -E dot com. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, and absolutely, Sarah, thank you for, for being here today because you're right, your binders are extremely well organized and it's a very painless, I sh and I should hesitate or focus on that painless process for both of us when I get to come and see you. So thank you so much for being a part of this today. Um, we really do appreciate all of the organization and pretty much all of the um, expertise that you bring to the program. So thank you for your help. No, no um, problem. <clears throat> And then one, another general tip, ladies and gentlemen, photos really do, pictures speak a thousand words, and that's very true. So if any of these practices seem overwhelming, such as um, how do you verify that you're doing multiple, multiple tasks in the field at once, take a picture of it. If you have an over-the-row sprayer where you spray two rows, you can easily take a picture of yourself doing that and show that to us, and that's very, um, very good documentation for that practice. So do not hesitate to use pictures. And also remember that this ins inspection, it's not an inspection where we are out to get you <laughs> to try and find mistakes. Um, I try and introduce our, myself as your friendly neighborhood Lodi Rules Auditor. I'm not the IRS. I'm not the state. I'm not the county. I'm here to help you. Um, and that literally is my, it's not just my motto, but it's the way that I um, conduct my business. So um, it is a respectful visit to verify that all of the wonderful sustainable practices that you are doing um, are being implemented, but it's also ultimately to add to the merit of the program, which across the board, um, ladies and gentlemen, you do very, very well. So I guess with that, we can jump into our question and answer session. And I guess I'll start. So, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but to ask a question, you'll simply type it into your webinar's chat box, and then you're going to select send question to organizers and panelists. And then I, as Heather's talking, I'm going to type these questions onto our screen sharing document. And so if your question is specific to Heather, the auditor, or to Sarah, the grower, um, please use their name in that question. And if you're having a, a hard time with this, I, I'm pretty sure it just says chat, and it's a little box to, on your go-to webinar thing. And then you will um, type that in. If you're really having trouble, you could, well, I think we have Melissa listening in, so you could Call the Wine Grape Commission 209-367-4727 and they could run in into us with your question if, if worst case scenario. So we're going to go ahead and Heather's going to start with these questions for you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the first question um, will 
is simply will I please walk you through a first year growers on-site audit process what can you expect uh, well number one you can expect a phone call or an email ahead of time scheduling the date the time and the location of your audit um, and then you will expect Jeff or I to show up at the agreed upon place absolutely at the agreed upon time um, we are definitely not late in less traffic, <laughs> but we really do work on being there absolutely on time. And so you can expect us to arrive. We'll need to sit down somewhere to go over your document documentation first. So whether that's your office or um, I've sat down at a number of home kitchen tables. For that matter, I was just at a little diner up in Clarksburg last week for an audit as well. So um, we can do it in a number of different locations. I've also sat in the back in the bed of trucks for a couple of hours doing doing documentation there because um, I understand gentlemen, especially when you're out in the fields, oftentimes your truck is your office. So, um, but we need to meet somewhere to go over the documentation first, and then we go out into the field and visually um, inspect just kind of I often ask to see the perimeter go around the perimeter of the field I often will I will ask to see the pump um, to verify backflow and flow meters and um, the the structure or the electrical sorry the power plant for the pump um, to verify those standards and then we'll see owl boxes we'll see bat boxes we'll see bluebird or duck boxes um, I'll ask you about any um, California native species that you might have. We'll see if you have woodlands or riparian areas or um, intermittent water bodies, etc. So we'll see all the environmental stuff out in the field. And that literally is what you can expect from us on a first audit. So Heather, you only choose certain standards that you're going to audit at each visit then? No, okay. no, we, um, we will sit down with the self-assessment and go through every single standard when, when um, we're doing the documentation. And so that happens first, but then there are certain of those standards that can only be verified by seeing them in the field. And so that's why we go out to the field and actually visually visualize some of those standards. Um, so one... One point, I, I, so if you're a grower that only has a couple fields, Heather will probably look at both of those field standards. For us, we are, you know, we, we have 30 something um, fields in the program, so she usually picks one of those to walk all the way through all of the standards from beginning to end. Instead of all 32, which would take us probably three days to do. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, for, for sharing that. Yes, that's absolutely correct. If you have more than 10 fields, um, I keep a, document, a documented record of what fields have been seen in the past. And so in the first audit, we do go out and see everything. But then in subsequent audits after that, we will choose fields here and there um, that we go out and see. And so, Heather, you bring a printed copy of their self-assessment yes. to the audit. And so for them to prepare, it'd be a good idea for them to print out their records from, from their answers, right, or have their binder where their answers are. Always, yes, always have your binder. I have a copy of your self-assessment in front of me, um, and I'm literally just going through and checking every single box as we talk about it, as we go through it. Um, but, yes, please always have your binders in front of you. Um, I do also print off the points awarded during your self-assessment and then your points needed for certification because sometimes there are changes on the self-assessment during the audit. Um, so, for example, if you have a risk, uh, you said on the self-assessment for 1.4 that you have a self-assessment or, sorry, a risk management plan, but in reality there really wasn't one um, set up, we, I kind of go, well, let's work on that for next year, so we take off two points there. And um, so if there are points throughout the course of the audit that you lose, but then you end up gaining some because you didn't realize, oh, well, I think I recycle, but I don't really do it to the extent that is mentioned, but you actually have started a recycle program, I will give you full points for that. Um, so I can give you back a couple of points as well. So those difference in point changes throughout the course of the audit. Um, are then I can, because I, I print out the points awarded during the self-assessment, but then the points needed for certification 
and then I can verify that you've re reached the 70% standard that's required for um, all of the points during the audit as well. So Heather, can you tell us some stories maybe about, um, obviously an anonymously, Absolutely. but some common errors that you see made over and over during the audits that we hope that this won't happen for these great people watching this webinar. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, common errors can just simply be as simple as while you're filling out the self-assessment, you hit... Um, for example, for your sustainability vision on 1-1, one -one, you say, yes, we have a full sustainability vision, and verbally you say, this is what my sustainability vision is. Well, that's great, but we actually, the standard asks for it to be written. And so I'll give you, I'll say, okay, during the audit, that's actually six, negative six points because you don't really have a sustainability vision written, but I will give you a list of things that you are Required and or recommended to complete and if you get those to me before the end of the season which I think is October 15th this year October 31st yeah we assigned it as October 31st October 31st. this year if I get to see all of those things before the end of the season then you get those points back so um, that would be one common error would be giving yourself more points on a certain standard or certain standards than you actually really do have. Um, and that's also the whole point of actually being there in person is to go through it with you. And oftentimes those additional points um, are absolutely not intentional. It's not an intent to deceive or do anything like that. It's, it's just simply a misunderstanding or um, a misinterpretation, I guess you could say. Um, and absolutely, we're all human. We make those simple mistakes. So that's absolutely not a problem. Um, another com common error that I've seen is just simple disorganization. Um, if you don't have things set up in a binder and they're just pretty much everywhere, um, it's a painful process <laughs> to go through and try and find Please, please do yourself a favor and make sure that you're fully that the Wine Group Commission does. It's It's not ready yet. Uh, we have we have those consultants. Is that you're thinking of? That's there, what yeah. I'm thinking of. Um, but um, it would be pretty late to get one of those now to prepare for your audit. But it would. Um, that is a resource that's available. And so if you need that information, then. And you would be able to. I can't. Um, Um, I can't point in terms of other common error definition. I think another common error is the definition of have so I think they have a woodland. when there's only a couple pay careful definition of the certain area and there's a different definition versus individual trees versus a riparian area versus an intermittent water body um, and again those are all things that we talk about during the audit but I would encourage people to pay special attention to those definitions Um, okay, so I think it's the acronym, but we'll just like, give it a second.
apologize, ladies and gentlemen, technical difficulties. Okay, I think it's back. It's back. Okay, it looks like we're back. Um, the perfect audience of what the grower has ready. Um, I will honestly say for the 2017 season, I had the very first perfect audit, the very first audit of the season. Um, it was a wonderful experience. So we sat down um, again in the grower's kitchen. He had a, a math cover chapter one and two, but then it also just had forms that answered questions such as the soil labs. Um, it had the water the water labs it had um, or the water analysis lab results um, in it for each of his fields but then he had each chapter set up in an individual binder chapters one through six and so I literally just grabbed the the binder for chapter one and started going through the self-assessment if there was something um, that he was that was being used to answer a standard where the, the documentation was actually in the master forms binder, go back to that, I found the documentation and was able to move on. Um, that's a really good example of kind of a perfect audit in terms of documentation. Um, I think I ended up with six questions that I Okay, um, sorry. Um, uh, it's my turn to start speaking, and um, the internet is down at the commission for a moment, so I will take over for right now. Um, uh, one thing I would like to, I'm going to flip my webcam on really quickly and see if you all can see me. Okay, there I am. Um, so one thing that I have found that has helped me over the years is besides my big binder, I actually keep a little, where's my, there it is, um, a little notebook and you can see I have tabs from each year. And so like our last audit was in 2015. Um, and these are my, all of my notes from that day, some of which went into the creation of the checklist. Um, and this was from when Heather was there. Um, and that was a particular time where I actually physically couldn't be there, so we did something similar to this. Um, we did a Skype while Heather and my father were sitting at the kitchen table. Um, and, uh, oh, my webcam is all black. Okay. Um, I'm just going to turn it off. Um, so I keep a notebook that has year-to-year -year tabs, and, and that way I can see the things that... Um, uh, the things that people that that Heather's asked for over years, and I can any changes or any notes that I have to make for the next 
next year, I'm able to do that, and and it helps me tremendously um, to be able to do to to keep that. I also keep spreadsheets, and um, it's a where I get pretty anal about this. Um, and well, let me see if my webcam is working again. Okay. So like this is, these are my notes this year. We don't happen to have an audit, but this is from the audit checklist for this year. And these are my notes on everything that I needed to gather um, for this year to make sure that we, are, our binder is in compliance um, if we were to have a, um, the, the random audit. Um, so that's one of the things that helps me prepare for the on-site audit. It takes me um, it it takes me a, a pretty good amount of time to be honest with you. Um, I I do a lot of the prep um, being remotely um, with my dad and I on the phone going over. We go through all of the standards every year. Um, so if you have if you're the grower and doing it yourself, then it's easier for you. You can just step through the process and you make sure, you know, each year we have to update the fertilizer records and the yield reports as well as all of the analysis reports. So those are just things you get used to doing um, year after year. Um, and so, you know, if I, if on a year that I know that we're going to have an audit, I take more time. Um, at the beginning of the season to get everything ready so that once the list comes out, we're good to go. Um, there's been a couple years where we've been a surprise on the audit list, which may happen, um, and that's been a bit of a scramble. So it's always best to start as early as you can, you know, in February and March and start getting your stuff organized and knowing the things that you didn't necessarily get taken last year, like, you know, uh, you didn't get the pictures taken of the particular, you know, um, equipment that was doing, that were doing the two processes at the same time the um, from last year, and so you need to take that pic picture this year, um, creating your lists and things like that. Um, so those are, those are definitely... Um, things that will help you in your audit prep. Um, so I think that's okay. Um, how my a recommendation on how to organize petiole samples, water tests, pump tests, etc. So in our binder, so there's a couple different ways you can do this. We do it kind of two ways actually. We keep copies of those reports in the actual Lodi rules binder itself. So we have the massive binder that has all of the written um, plans and the maps and everything very specific to Lodi rules. And we actually started just slipping those into that at the at towards the end of the binder in a section. Sometimes there are individual sections and sometimes it just is called analysis reports tab. So you can do it that way. You can have a separate binder um, that has all of your specific um, analysis reports in, which will, works for Heather as well. And then we do a little bit of a hybrid. My dad keeps all of the pump test reports in his pump um, and irrigation binder. So he he's a binder guy. He If you walk into his office, he's got shelves and shelves of binders. Um, and so he likes to have everything organized that way, and so it's easier for him to have the pump test reports in that binder. And so on one of my pages for our next audit, I have a list of um, binders that I keep in my notebook of what we need to pull for the next time we have an audit. So we have, I know that I need to pull the irrigation binder, the safety log, the pump test reports, and the HR binder. Um, all of those things are too big to keep for us to keep in our Lodi rules binder, so we keep them separately and just pull them out for Heather to look at when she comes. So I hope that answers the question. If um, if somebody needs more clarification, I'm happy to help. You could also, I know a bunch of those reports come electronically. If you keep, you can keep them that way as well, um, and then. Um, show them to Heather either on a laptop or um, I think Heather remind me if you travel with a laptop I don't remember 
<laughs> I can. Yeah, actually, I can, yes. Um, some people do upload their plans into the self-assessment portal, and I can actually see them ahead of time before I come on site. Um, but yes, I do, I do carry a laptop as well. Um, so you can also just have those um, those analysis reports and whatever else you want. If you don't want to actually print it and use all the paper, just have them on a thumb drive that Heather can then just thumb through. Um, okay, we have another question. Um, do we work closely with PCAs to get paperwork? Yes. Um, my dad works with um, Mark Shimazaki and Charlie Starr, and I am during the, the prep and Lodi Rolls season. I am emailing Charlie all the time. Um, so there are certain things that they do. Um, that's why you contract with them um, that then you don't need to recreate. So like for instance, Mark and Charlie do all of the sprayer and duster calibration. My dad's present for that, but he doesn't actually take the notes. Charlie keeps them all. And so when it comes time for our audit, I just email Charlie a list of things that I need um, and he sends them to me. Um, so if you are working with a PCA, it's definitely a way to um, definitely work with them, let them know what's going on. They should be aware of the program. Um, and they'll, and sometimes they're growers themselves, like Charlie is a grower them, himself, and so he knows what we need. Um, and I just have to tell him, okay, our, our audit is on such and such a day, and he'll have it for me. Um, from other growers, um, I when we started in the program, my cousin Aaron uh, for Lang Twins had already been a part of the program for a year or two, and so he really helped me out. Um, and I actually started, I, I got several other growers in the area up and running their first couple years um, before they took it over from themselves. Um, if I was living in there, on there, I'd probably be, probably would be doing this full time. Um, but it's just, it's a little bit challenging to do it remotely. Um, with that said, I am happy to help. I have templates and other things that might be helpful for people, especially when it comes to calculating um, PEAS reports. Those can be challenging um, depending on how you get your uh, use reports out. Um, the, and then do I print stuff for myself online? Um, the things that I get off or from online are mainly the maps um, that that show you soil tests and things like that. Okay, great. Do we have any other questions about getting ready? This is your chance. You've got actually you've got three growers in the house and. Mm -hmm. And Heather here, and I think our audio is working again. So, any other questions for any of the people that we've got present today? Just type those through your chat box. Um, we'll wait around. If you want to think about your questions, we'll wait around for another five minutes or so. If we don't get any more questions, um, then thank you all so much for attending. And again, this recording and the handout will be up online at our LodiGrowers.com website under the um, Educational Resources tab. So thank you all. I hope you all have a very successful audit. Heather, any last words? Or Sarah? Um, so I, I would just oh, Go ahead, Sarah. I would just say don't, um, don't be afraid of the auditors. It can feel really intimidating, especially your first time. Um, and um, it, so just, you know, be open, talk to them. And then you, the way that you endear yourself to the auditors is by doing your follow up. So when they say, you know, and, and Heather, the last time Heather was there, um, we needed to provide a bunch of uh, several things that we just we either didn't have because it was way early in the growing season or um, we hadn't done before it was there were new questions um, new standards that had been implemented since our previous audit so um, you know we it's it's the first time you go through it it feels kind of painful but it will get easier and you know if you have questions before your audit email Heather she will tell you, I email her 
all the time. So um, I'm always asking her, <laughs> okay, so what about this? Or can we do this instead? And you know, she'll tell me, oh no, that won't work. Oh, or or oh yeah, that's a great idea. Do that instead. So you know, she is open and and there to help you. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, for that endorsement. We very much appreciate that, and that is absolutely true. Please do not hesitate to contact Jeff or I um, with any questions, either beforehand, during the growing season, or for that matter, even after. Um, I know this is an unusual year with all the rain we had ahead of time, um, and so actually for the five audits I've been to so far, nobody's really had any scouting reports because it's so early in the season. And so with things like that, I understand, both of us understand, um, and Sarah's absolutely right. So long as you get everything in by the last day on the certification um, calendar, which this year is October 31st, um, everything is clear and, and you're usually good to go. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. What's Jeff's email, Heather, in case they want to email Jeff? And then also, Heather, if someone emails you, would, do you typically have like a 24 or a 48-hour response. I know sometimes we've gotten emails and then a couple hours later someone will email us again and say, hey, um, did you get my email? And it's like, we need a, a few more hours. We can't respond to every email within a couple of hours, but what's a typical a typical time frame for an email response, Heather? Oh, boy. Uh, that's a good question. First, to answer the first one, Jeff Leak is the other auditor, and his email is jfleak, jfleak at gmail.com. And now that we are fully on the ground, as of June 1st, my feet were on the ground doing audits. So um, my turnaround time is much faster than it was earlier. And Sarah, I think I owe you an apology because I think there was a two week or three week period of time that I didn't get back to you on email. Um, that's the end of my teaching season when I'm in finals. And unfortunately, that was not a good time. But um, as of right now, my turnaround time I'm willing to say is within 72 hours for emails. So please do not hesitate to email either Jeff or myself, and um, or for that matter, call or text. Please do not hesitate to text us as well. Um, that's another option thanks to technology. And we did just have another question come through. So um, the question was, when do we have our next sustainable vision workshop dates? Um, so we actually usually only have one sustainable vision workshop per year. This year in 2017, we hosted two sustainable vision workshops. And just to give you an idea, those are very expensive. And um, we have between six and 30 people attend this. So we won't have another one of those probably until at the very earliest, December of this year. Um, so. If you are interested in attending a Sustainable Vision workshop, then you should email Stephanie, email me at lodiwine.com. Um, and I'll, I'll put you on the list as wanting to attend one. And then we make sure that all the people who want to attend a Sustainable Vision workshop will, um, will, the, will have a date and a location and a time that works for them along with Kent Reeves. So great last question. Any other questions?